name is Jennifer Boylan, and we are outside Tiger Hall on the University of Florida's campus. And what happened today? Um, today there was a, uh, a press conference by the student coalition that is organizing to protest Richard Spencer's speech on October 19th, 2017, which is in four days. Um, and then after that, there was a march to Tiger Hall to come talk to the president, um, but we were locked out. Um, friend Candy Churchill, who's a uh, the faculty union rep, has said she's been organizing at UF for over 20 years, and they've never locked us out before. Um, so that's kind of significant. How did you get involved? So I I'm a postdoc here at UF. Um, I graduated from UF with a PhD in political science in 2009. Uh, uh, 2016. I began in 2009. Um, uh, I've already, because I study politics, I've always been sort of aware, but um, I organize mostly with National Women's Liberation. Um, How did you get involved with the National Women's Liberation? I took a class, so there was a class being offered in the fall, I had just graduated last fall, um, and I thought it was a great opportunity to talk about theory with non-academics, um, with people who, you know, go to work every day and... Um, or outside of a university community. Um, so that's how that began. And then Trump got elected, so then it continued. Um, do you think that Trump's election is tied to the Richard Spencer's group? Um, I think the election of Trump is causing a redefinition of a lot of um, political correctness or acceptable values or things that are acceptable to say. Um, so in that sense, um, I mean, Richard Spencer, neo-Nazis have been around before Trump. So I don't think that he's the cause of individuals like Spencer existing or believing the things that they um, believe. But do... I think that there's sort of a resurgence or there's a reason why Richard Spencer is using places like Florida or next he's going to Ohio. Um, is he trying to vital, revitalize some base that were also strong Trump supporters, um, people who fear diversity, people who fear losing control over certain things in society? Yeah, I think those things are related. Why do you think the, the U.S. administration has had the response that it's had to the Richard Spencer? Um, it kind of perplexes me um, in a lot of ways. I'm, you know, we expect, um, I have contacts with the March for Racial Justice. People, I'm from D.C., people I know who were at the um, rallies at UVA. Um, we kind of expect Richard Spencer's crew to do the unexpected. Um, to do surprise things. On a, uh, I mean, we're kind of on alert that they could show up any day. They could terrorize black communities like they have in the past, go to downtown areas like they have in other places any day now. Um, what I don't expect is for UF to do surprise moves or make surprise moves or not be clear about their stance. Um, there's a meme I saw on Facebook today that was... Um, President Fox and um, saying, you know, I sent a strongly worded email out. I'm against white supremacy. And it's like, yeah, I, I really, um, I think they're hiding behind that so they can have this public stance um, that they're against certain values. But um, does it surprise me that they have not fought tooth and nail for us? Yeah, that surprises me a lot. And I can't exactly explain it. Right, you've been at UF for a significant period of time now. Yeah, I guess, it, so if I, I came here in the, uh, August 2009. Um, so do you think that you've seen a change in the administration over that time? You know, I, President Fox was kind of forced on UF, I felt like in some ways, um, which usually is a terrifying or like a, a concerning thing for a university president. Um, to have the Board of Trustees or the Governor be involved in the appointment of a President. But President Fox um, turned out um, in a lot of ways to be a lot more progressive, send out more progressive messages. Um, there's some things you could critique him on, like, you know, when the end of DACA was announced, there was, you know, an email sent out about um, 
undocumented students being protected um, or being valued at UF, et cetera, et cetera. When this Betsy DeVos um, rewriting of these Title Title IX rules about sexual assault were announced, there was no email out from the administration. Um, but if I'm talking about you know liberal versus liberal, like progressive versus progressive items, it's like I can kind of live with that debate. There's always going to be critique. There always should be a critique. Um, so on the whole, I think this is incredibly unusual from the face of things that um, President Fox has overall brought to campus. Um, that excludes GAU negotiations, um, which I think is a continuation of the same that's always been not great. Um, but yeah, um, this surprises me. I think this is a change within this administration even. How do you think Gainesville is going to receive this influx of white supremacy? Um, I think a lot of people won't see it. Um, I think the effect will be concentrated in particular areas. Um, these people, when they come, they terrorize campuses, they terrorize black communities, and terrorize downtown areas. Um, and if you're not in those areas, um, a lot of people just don't want to hear about this. They just want to shut it out. It disrupts their lives. Um, it causes, you know, anger and pain. Um, and so um, I like to think that the Gainesville community will be stronger or better after this. I'm pretty concerned at the degree to which Gainesville city officials and UF administration has strongly discouraged people from showing up to a democratic protest. Um, and I think that those like wounds will affect us for a long period of time, and especially the progressive nature of our community. Um, it's hard to believe in officials who don't believe in democratic protests but pursue other progressive items. Um, so I see that as sort of a negative lasting, like the division of the left, like always, um, and this time for, I think, a necessary reason. Is there anything else like that? Um, I wish people cared a lot more. Um, I wish people understood the degree to which these like symptoms of a problem are part of a bigger problem, um, that Richard Spencer can come to town and leave town but that doesn't mean we don't still have major issues. Um, Richard Spencer's, he's kind of like, a, it's, we have these like new leaders who are really good at talking, who are really good at um, saying dog whistle type things, talking about um, really potentially violent um, actions without actually naming it that way. So it becomes, um, it's smart. Um, it also gains a lot of followers so people think oh okay Nazis nobody is gonna be a Nazi you know in the US but then it's like yeah but if people have racial resentments against communities of color or resentments against feminist movements um, then all of a sudden a speaker like Richard Spencer if you aren't looking for the violent part of his speech just like Trump then you can kind of ignore that and focus on the things that you align with so it's a lot more dangerous than people think it is. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for doing this. <laughs>